Hello everyone, my name is Schnugs, welcome to another Bloodline video. Before we kick off this video, I want to say happy holidays to everyone. I hope everyone's having a fantastic um, holiday season. We're in here with the Gold, the Gold Tongue clan today. And I want to just give my opinion and reviews on the male and female and the clan overall. I've read a lot of negative comments. A uh, few content creators that I, that I follow so far for Bloodline has uh, mentioned how bad the male is and his knockback. So I see things completely different for the male. For me and my team, I am looking for a single target DPS or someone with some sort of uh, crowd control, which for the male, I'll be able to find both. Uh, well, the female as well, but I'll explain why I, I prefer the male over the female. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to just review the video of the clan introduction and kind of give my feedback on each skill and how it works. All right, I want to start with the female here today. With the female gold tongue, her passive skill, Persistent Hunter, this is at max level, by the way. I'm going to read all these stats at max at level 15. Uh, but Persistent Hunter, normal attacks drain the target's energy by 80 points. If the target is marked by the lichen, the energy drained by normal attacks is increased by 50%. So, that's actually pretty good. That's 120 points if they're marked. Okay, if a target is marked, that's 120 points worth of energy she will drain on each normal attack. Which is pretty big, actually. So, starting off strong for this female here. Let's head over to her active skill. Marked for the kill. So, hurls javelins at enemies in a pie-shaped area in front of the champion. I'm guessing a uh, semicircle for pie-shaped. It also, if you notice, there's like a small bubble that pops up around her when she does it. So, I'm guessing it is supposed to be like a, a circular area in front of the enemy. Uh, consuming 200 energy also inflicts an energy mark on the target. It expires in 8 seconds. When the marked target is killed, the lichen gains 100 energy. So essentially, uh, this is another good skill. It does require for targets to be grouped up to have uh, to have a, a proper max effect. How I see this working is essentially if you have someone like a male Orost or male Tidestorm to pull them in, or a super underrated character, oh man, the male Sallyhorn, because as soon as he starts to match, he actually dashes forward into the into the enemy uh when i ran him what i would do is keep him in the center in spot uh two spot three let's double check that but i'll keep him in the center in the first first spot in the back line and the match would start he would charge forward at the caster more than likely that they would have in the middle and by by sprinting forward he would get aggro from both tank positions and he would have Essentially, everyone grouped up in that area. Throw in a tide storm that would pull another one of the back line in, and right there you would have four out of your five grouped in one area and ready to be demolished. So if you get a proper group around this uh, female Galtung, it looks like she has some pretty decent potential here with her passive and her active skill. So let's go over and take a look at her ultimate, Wolf Wolven Spear. Holds a javelin at each of the enemies, dealing damage equals to 450% of the strength and additional damage based on the target's current energy. For each 1% less energy the target loses, the damage is increased by 1%. This makes her a beast for that guardian, I can't remember what it's called, it's guardian something. That's the event where you have to get 400 levels, and you just get a ton of waves each level, and every 5th level you get actual champions to fight. Right now, I use male Aeson. That's the meat and potatoes for my team. I need, I need a tank healer, my male Aeson right now. And he clears it pretty much in one one hit up to about level uh, 50. So it's getting a bit dicey for him where he can't finish off the entire group in one hit. Um, with this, if she's hitting everyone, so it says, hurls a javelin at each of the enemies. So that means she would hit everyone on this on the field 
and do 450% of her attack, of her strength. For that event, uh, whatever it's called, Guardian Spire, I'm not sure because it's, it's hard to find uh, anywhere. I was just trying to look up the list of events. I wasn't able to find it, but that would make her a beast. If I'm able to get her and my male Aeson, or probably even a male Fulger, uh, I'd have... Instead of getting level 75, I'm pretty sure I'd be getting closer to 100, uh, level 100, uh, for each uh, attempt, essentially. So, there you have it for, for the female. Um, I won't say nothing special. She does have really good energy control. She can keep someone locked down. Uh, the only thing is for her ultimate, she does lose uh, 200 as well. I'm sorry, for her active skill, she does lose 200 of her own energy from from how I understand it. She's consuming 200 energy, but if she marks enough targets and any of them get killed, her ultimate is then refreshed, essentially, because she would get 100 energy for each person she would kill. So, uh, yeah, she's interesting. She does have AoE, which is great for my team mode I'm looking for right now. I do have... Uh, AoE from my male Aeson, who also gives me a shield right now, and the extra strength, not the biggest deal for his passive, but she just wouldn't be the best fit right now in my current uh, main PvE team. Ooh, next we're going to move on to the male Galtung. For his passive, Predator's Instinct, normal attacks have a 40% chance to be critical, increasing damage by 100%, knocking the target back for a short distance. This right here to me is what makes him amazing. So everyone else talks about this short knockback, and it seems to be, well, I want everybody grouped up, you know, for my Devala or to nuke everyone, I need him grouped up rather than spread, so he's not going to fit. The description might be a little off, because if you look at this here, it looks to me like he makes them stumble. I wouldn't even consider it a knockback, okay? They don't, they don't get knocked anywhere. They don't go far. They literally kind of stumble back, but they have to reposition themselves, which is what makes this super interesting for me, meaning that this is a potential interrupt. I'm not 100% sure yet if it works that way because I am about to build mine. But it looks to be a, an interrupt. Because almost everyone that I've used so far, before they hit their ultimate, they do pause for a moment. And, you know, they have a tell that they're about to do it. They have a move, essentially. That does take a fraction of a second, about a second. I imagine if they get knocked back while they're about to cast that or any other ability, that it would interrupt the ability, essentially. So, with this... At level 15, he has a 40% chance to do critical damage and to interrupt the target. Okay? So, Predator's Instinct, again, I believe is what makes his entire kit. Uh, for his active ability, the Wolf's Bite fires a volley of arrows that consistently deals... Damage equals to 233% of the strength per second to the target and all nearby enemies. The volley of arrows will also inflict silence to all enemies for 2 seconds and reduce their movement speed by 80% and attack speed by 40%. The effect lasts for 3 seconds. Okay. There seems to be a lot in this uh, active ability here. But, a couple positives I've got. This is a volley, so anybody within that area of whoever he's targeting will be hit as well. Uh, they'll be silenced for two seconds, but if, they're, if they were starting a cast, or if they were about to cast something, they would have to wait, giving our team a better chance to survive. So the silence on there alone is absolutely phenomenal for me. Uh, the movement speed, though, not the... That doesn't even have to be there, because honestly... With his stumble ability, again, it's not a, a knockback. With his stumble ability, they literally take a step forward. Now, the only way that would be something that would be useful is if it's a 
if it's a melee character like a fighter that's running towards us in the back row where he's slowed so it's taking him more time and he's getting damage as he's trying to get to us but in most cases you know there will be a, a tank or somebody up ahead taking the damage holding the um the team at bay so again right now i don't see a need for the 80 percent speed reduction but the 40 percent attack speed super useful help keep my tank or whoever is being hit by the, by that target or those targets alive longer and give them a chance to get healed up and stay in the fight or to even get to their ultimate and finish the fight um so yeah that's a decent ability but again his main his main thing for me would be his predator's instinct which would do the knockback uh critical damage 40 percent critical damage chance a knockback uh yeah for the male galtong's uh ultimate we're looking at howl's hunter hunters up uh, maybe i'm dyslexic hunter's howl enter the state of bloodlust for seven seconds increasing attack speed by 350 percent with all normal attacks causing critical damage knocking the target back for a short distance and healing the champion for 100 percent of the damage dealt this effect can't be removed Wow. So, if we can gear this this uh, character properly, essentially, what I'm seeing here is his ultimate is a full heal for him, guaranteed critical damage for all of his normal attacks, and he'll be attacking a lot faster with a 350% increase in his attack speed. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is it right here. So keeping him or getting him in a state of ultimate where he's constantly using it would do some crazy damage. Uh, so my plan right now is to replace him, uh, with my, replace my, up. Oh, my plan is to replace my female Trevayan with my with this male gall tongue and also to try to get my to replace my female Trevayan with this with the male gall tongue uh, and that will be my actual single target dps for my teams it does come with its own sustain as well with his ultimate here and depending on what comp he's used in he could essentially have his ultimate running the entire fight uh with a female loom in the team as well Provided that he is the highest um, strength on the team. Because the female loom does target the person with the highest strength. Well, overall not a crazy clan. You know, nothing game-breaking or extraordinary. Uh, but I do like the look. I love both their abilities. But I will say that for me, it would be the male Galtung since... I need his damage more than anything else to complete my team and actually have a, you know, a Valley of Conqueror team or a, a PvE team in general. Which could also translate, honestly, into my arena team. But again, my my uh, Trevayan, she's just there for the boss damage right now. Let's take a look at this now. Also, speaking of sustain, before I forget, check this out. Traits, Steadfast, at level 18, Effect, when taking skill damage, gains a shield that absorbs damage equal to 412% of the champion's strength, cooldown 6 seconds. So, if we're able to get a decent amount of strength on these characters, even before we get to level 22, we're looking at 412% shield, which is a sizable shield, not to mention with the... With the male Galtung, if you're getting skill damage and you do get a shield and your ultimate pops, now you're healing as well based on the damage that you do. Um, this is crazy sustain, in my opinion. Okay? Before testing it, this is how it seems. So, yeah. Male Galtung all the way. Uh, over the next week or so, I'm going to wait for the next marriage challenge before I actually 
uh, finish him out because I need to get some vigor in him as well. But I will gear him, uh, get some traits on him, and yeah, work on his ascension. Once I get all that done, I'll see how he fits into everything and drop a video on that as well. Here's my take on Clan Goltan. Both are pretty unique. Uh, amazing clan trait if used properly. I think there's a lot of potential there. Both characters, male and female, are pretty unique in their own right. However, for me, the male's going to be the way to go. To go because of his kit and what I'm looking for to fit into my team. As I'm looking to replace my female Trevayan. So, yeah, tell me what you think. Like, comment, uh, follow for more. You know, there's always going to be more coming. Uh, anything you want to see, please let me know. And if anybody can remember the name of that event that pops up where you have to do uh, 40, uh, 400 waves total to get the reward, please comment down below and let me know. All right, folks, I've been Schnugs. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video.